thing about this episode is that I'm going to be speaking to one of my best friends. And I really hope that we're able to get through this without being weird because we've never had to interview each other. No, we haven't. And that's what's going to happen tonight. Firstly, can I just say, she says she's Oprah and I'm Adele. I'm Oprah. I'm, I'm Adele. <laughs> no, please don't do that. Okay, I won't do that. Because I'm really bad at it. Friend, how are you? I'm happy. I'm tired, but I'm happy. Okay. How's everything? Outside of happy because everything is happening now and we're all here and it's a good day. But how are you as a person in your essence? I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, but I'm blessed. Yes. Right? I get to do what I love. Yes. Um, yeah. Like, it's like, I think we don't take moments, excuse the pun. Okay. As they come. Yeah. But I've always been that person yeah. where I'm, I'm always... You're moving to the next thing. Chasing the next. But I'm also growing. Like, I find myself, like, growing in, in like, the ownership mm. of, of myself mm. and, like, being unapologetic about it, which I've always struggled with. Mm. Let's, let's go back before you got to a point where you have to own all of that, right? Uh, when I met you 15 years ago. Hey, take. 15 years ago. Um, I remember when I was in matric 16 years ago. Do the math, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't a matric then, by the way. You were in grade 11, 10, 11, whatever. Uh, but my cousin was like, there's someone that was at my school that you're going to meet at UJ. Her name is Tando Tabete. Yes. And I think, and my cousin, Sabelo Shabalala, shout out. Shout out. He was like, I really think, and we were in high school. He was like, going to UJ, this girl is going to UJ. I think you guys are going to be friends. Yeah. I When I see you and I've gone to school with her, you kind of like remind me of each other. And then we meet. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that moment. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how we meet. Also how I'm like, oh my gosh, this is that girl that my cousin told me about. Because we met in drama. Yes, we did. Um, what was the play called again? Flatspin. 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 It was about a laundromat. Yes. Um, it, it was my first year of varsity, your second, second year, year of varsity. Yeah. Um, and then you became my understudy in, yes. in, in, in the play. And we just were inseparable. And they put us together. I was like, yeah. she's reading all the lines. Yeah. I'm just waiting for her to get sick <laughs> so I can do the play. Because that's what an understudy is. You have to yeah. kind of wait for the person playing. Playing yes. the play to not be okay. Mm. I, I mean, look, I, I didn't see it that way. And mm. you you handled it with such great maturity. Yeah. Like you <laughs> like, no, you really did. Like mm. I didn't feel like you were waiting for me to yeah. die. You know, because like, <laughs> sometimes you like you like <laughs> waiting for people to die. Yes. And it's like, oh my gosh, my time yes. cooks. My time to shine or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I I think you handled it with I mean, that's why this friendship still stands. Yeah. Talk to me about. Not only when we met at the time, but Tondo at UJ, right? Because you were, when I met you, yes, I met all our group of friends through you. But you were a hybrid kind of person. You were very creative, very artistic, involved in all things art. But also you were an A student. You were proper like acing a become accounting degree. Yeah. Which is very hard for a lot of people to walk out of varsity and say, I did really well at that. Yeah, I think that's who I've always been. Like yeah. I take it back to like, High school days, I was that kid who was doing drama, debating, public mm. speaking, but also athletics. Mm. And I played tennis at one point. I played netball. Mm. And whipping out an netball, a. You know what I mean? And then whipping out an A at the mm. same time. And it sort of translated into, into who I am. So it's, I'm like, I'm mm. like I'm, mm. I'm always like, okay, what can I do now? What can I do now? And I enjoy, like, I enjoy working. Mm. Like, genuinely enjoy mm. working. I think that's who I've always been. In varsity, I liked accounting. Like, mm. I studied a B become accounting because that's what I enjoyed in mm. school, right? But I, I knew I also enjoyed acting. I knew mm. I enjoyed drama. Radio came by absolute chance. Mm. Um, but I knew I wanted to be an actress. And uh, I mean, I would skip class to go, to go and audition. Um, and then like... And we were all like, just go to class. No, I, I wasn't a part. <laughs> and then, I, I mean, I lived at Red, so it was mm. a bunch of girls who were all studying accounting and I'd be like, what happened in class today? Mm. Uh, and they'd sort of, uh, so I owe it to them as well because they, they helped me catch up with whatever it was that I missed mm. out on. Let's go back to before I met you. Yeah. Tando growing up in Orlando, you went to crash next door the Mandela home. I did. You were like, one wall away from I was. Winnie Mandela. Yeah, yeah, I remember like being on the jungle gym and like you could peek <laughs> over Mandela's house and you see Winnie and Madibs. <laughs> did <laughs> you really M. see them? I did. No, no lie. I saw them. 
But then also, like, I don't know why I remember this, but like postcards were a thing back then. Yes. And they'd have and Mandela's like postcard. face. Yes. On the, on the postcards. And I'd be like, oh, my face. Like, you know? Like, um, yeah. Like, I mean, I remember like, in Gata. Hectic. Like, I mean, I was very young, but I remember my grand saying, mm. you know, and we'd run under the bed. I probably never not understand. Oh, so I can of, imagine in the area, Orlando. Yeah, that was like the Where hub. Mandela was. Yeah. So we lived on Mandela Street. Yes. You know, you're in the you're in the hub. The of, action yeah, is where, there. That's where, <laughs> that's where the WWE is going down. <laughs> so, so now you grew up in Orlando. You go to crash there, but you're, both your parents are from Orlando. Yes. So my 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 mom and my dad lived up the road from from one another. Yeah. So my my mother's mother's my mother's mother's house was closer to Villagazi Street. Yes. Which is also like a, a historic street. Yes. You've got Desmond Tutu. Yes. You've got Mandela's original yes. house. Uh, and then my my paternal grandmother is on the same streets as Mandela. So you can clearly see, like we I, I could walk from one. So to you the were other. like in the Mandela. Family home and Winnie's home that we know Correct. as Winnie's house. Correct. As uh, both your family. Exactly. And you, you could see what's about Chica and like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. What does your mom tell you about her love life? At that she age? tells me my dad, my dad was a hottie. Yes. Right. My dad was so cool. Yes. He drove a beetle, like a red beetle. Okay. And like it's when like young black guys didn't necessarily have cars. cars yeah. And my dad had a, a beetle and he had like this fro that was going and he'd wear like um, bell bottom pants. Don't touch. It don't touch. <laughs> and like he'd like blast music. You'd hear him before you see him. So he was like a cool yes. guy. And I mean, I don't blame her. I see it. And you're like, I'm like, course, I get girl. a girl. Get of a course, girl. girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you guys leave Orlando, like a lot of families at the time in Soweto, early 90s. Yeah, manji. There's Protea, there's La Churena. No, first of all, okay, there was Protea first. Yes. Um, Protea, we had a nice house. Mm. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was the nicest of houses, but it was one of the nicer houses. I yeah. remember my, da- my dad built us a jungle gym. Wow. Um, in, in the back of our yard, my we had very we didn't have much, yeah. but my dad always made us feel like we had more. Mm-hmm. Like I remember him buying us a secondhand, what is it? Those those cars that run on batteries. Yes, but imagine yes. in the streets of Soweto, yeah. oh, come on, riding in a convertible as a kid. Like, come on, you're winning. <laughs> exactly. The car is there. Exactly, and I mean we had like rollerblades. Like you know, I remember mm. rollerblading in the streets of Pretoria Glen, and I was like. I'm so cool. But my dad, and and I think it was so important. It, it made a child feel validated. It made a child feel important at a very young age. Mm. I didn't get it then, but like I see it now. Mm. Like we didn't have much, but he made us feel like we had everything. Your relationship with your dad is so different, but also so special. And I say so different in relation to all our friends' relationships with their parents. Because you are very close to your yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. You had like a... Um, I remember like driving with my dad. He taught me how to change gears. You know, small things like that. Like as a kid, I'm probably 10, 11 years old. Um, it, it helped me with my street smart. My dad treated me like a boy. Like I, I was wow. treated like a boy. So, I mean, my younger sister was, I don't know, I was closer to my older brother because I guess he was older. Mm. I, I mean, the, the age gap is pretty much the same. Mm. But as, as a, a little girl, um, you probably, la la. yeah, also my baby sister was a baby. Yeah. It, he, he could talk. Yeah. You know, so if I also was playing, be him. yeah, if I was playing outside, I'm playing soccer. Yes. Um, I, my mother thought I was a tom, well, yes. I was a tomboy yeah. because I'd play in the streets. I'd be playing soccer. I'd be playing crickets mm. in, in the streets. Uh, I think she was a little bit worried. <laughs> she was just like, well, ah. she like, wait. Also because your mom is very girly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's probably thinking, this is my first girl. Correct. And then I evolved and became a, a woman. A very really girly girl. Yeah. Then you guys move and you now find yourself in a space where not only are you studying with kids that speak English, but also are from different backgrounds. Yes. The little that you had was enough. But now you find the, yourself in a the, space. Then I realized, oh, we had nothing. We had nothing. <laughs> um, so I went to, for the first five years of my early schooling, so from mm. grade one to grade Four, I mm. would say. I went to Len, to a school in Lens called Lineage. Alpha Primary School. Oh, oh, you went to Alpha. Oh, I went to Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Bangani. 
Okay, <laughs> my friend Tato growing up also went to Alpha. Oh, she shut does. Up. Blue, right? Yeah, blue and, and red. Yes. Yeah. So I went to Alpha for the Alpha. Yeah, for the first five years of my life, they used to call me Tando Tabete. I remember, <laughs> I remember doing a speech because you 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 assimilate you what's the word? Hey, assimilate. Assimilate. Thank you. You assimilate to your environments, and there were a lot of Indian kids in yes. my school, and they call me Tando Tabete. So, so I remember tando. doing an English oral and saying my name is Tando Tabete, and they teased me. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. Every time I'd walk in, they go, "My name is Tando Tabete," and then I'd be like, "I hated it." Anyway, moved from Alpha in grade four, well, grade five into Monday Primary School, yes. which was a predominantly white mm. um, school at the time, which was completely different. Mm. Like the level of education is different. I felt like I was left behind. Mm. Like the kids were so much smarter. They spoke much better English than Catching I up. ever spoke. I had to play a game of extreme catch up. Mm. The one thing I knew how to do was run. I used to be an athlete. So I used to run. Mm. So I came from Alpha. When you're in Alpha, you run, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to mind you. I think in Shian, no, okay. Um, wow. And I think people don't know that, right? That like, I never knew white people really you until... You always say this. Yeah. Until I got to five, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, you always talk about how you never really got to interact with white people intimately until you were working. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Which, which is a culture shock, right? Because you don't laugh at the same jokes. Yeah. You don't speak the same. Yeah. You Sometimes I've had to learn. And I'm not saying my education was... My education was great. It wasn't subpar. Right? Yeah. But like it, if, if I take it back to those early years of primary school where I've missed out on, on four years of very fundamental education mm. where I've had to spend the last couple of years of my primary schooling sort of catching up mm, like mm. I, I forget what it was called but there was this one thing and it haunts me but it, it was this one thing in math class damn I wish I remember what the name was but it was a card they'd give you and and you'd have to add up the eight so, or something like that and everyone was able to do it so well mm. and I just wasn't able to do you it you had never done it before no I'd never done it before because the level of, of education was completely different and I spent like the first couple of years of my life catching up which I did successfully mm. because then I was an A student. But I was about to say, you were also an A student in primary school. That means a lot of catching up already at a very early age. Yeah. Let's talk about then Tando, primary school level, but at home, right? Yes. Now you're in a very different uh, environment. And I think a lot of young black people don't talk about this enough to say, yes, you're first generation in interracial spaces and other races and, and, and whether it's schooling or working, but there's challenges that come with that. It's it's very different. Like, um, there's small things that stay in my memory. I remember, I remember when we lived in Pertia, having to walk my my little sister to Krish. Mm. And it was it was dusty streets, mm. right? And so we moved to Mondio and she went to Smiley Kids. Oh, like to hey, it must be upgrade. Open my ear, my pupu to Smiley Kids. We're in Pulego. Yeah. And then <laughs> And <laughs> I just knew the lady being sala na kuku chain. Bengi na mini crush and bengi na kama. Bengi sala na kuku chain. So I remember picking up my sister from from crash, and they like something as simple as macaroni and cheese. What do you mean? Seems so fancy to me, you know? Like they were making, they're like, um, no, we, we're making them some mac and cheese. I'm like mac and cheese. <laughs> it's cheese. Eat people like It's cheese. Oh, you told us this captain in cheese. It's cheese. By the crash. I'm like, what? Um, but small little things like that linger in my mind. So yes, it was indeed a culture shock. So small things like, it's captain, you mm. know, where you like at Lens. Like they had like chip and dip at Tumondio, you know. We didn't have that where I came from. You know, That's so even like a, a blazer. I don't think we had a blazer. Did we have a blazer at Alpha? Oh, yeah, you did. I, Just no scrolls. <laughs> You're like, oh, pass it, let's go. Who's pass it, let's But later, I don't know. We, we, I don't remember wearing, I don't have pictures of me at Alpha they with were probably like not a blazer. That blazers. Because no. I remember there was a culture shock when I got to Girls Eye. I took off my blazer one of the first few days and I went to spa and my principal was there and he was like, what do you mean? But also small, You're not wearing your blazer. But small things, right? Because like, it's like how, for example, I don't know. It's like 
when you were a kid in Soweto, yes, and there's white people that come past Vilaga as the streets, yes, and you you run in the streets, and I was one of the kids. You're like, mm. Abelungu, yes. Abelungu. You know what I mean? And now they all around you. Yes. And and you you feel smaller than, you know? I felt smaller than because because where I came from. It was an anomaly. It was like, wow. Wait, you felt smaller than even when you were excelling at school and in, in sports? Yes, I felt smaller because I was entering a new environment. Like, I found it hard to interact. It was a real thing. Then you become Tando in high school. Yes. Right? Oh, then we reverse. Then, nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's popular now? No, no, I was still not popular. I was not necessarily popular. Okay. I don't think I was popular. I don't know. I was a, I was a bit of both. You I clearly think. were, because my cousin was like, "There's this girl who's brilliant at education and things yeah. academically, who's brilliant at art." I was that kid who'd like spend first break with the bad bads. Yeah, right. Because you're a bad bad. Yeah. Inside. yeah, yeah. I spend yeah. like first break with the bad bads with the tongue rings because I went to Mondo High School, right? Did you have a tongue ring? I did. Oh. I did. <laughs> I did actually. But then I spent second break with like the A plus students. Mm. So I had like a little bit of best of both worlds, which was lovely. I think that's why I've always said, and I said earlier that I've always seen you as a hybrid person. And I think anyone that gets to experience you sees that. You're very smart, but you're also very free, artistic. Yeah. And you kind of explore everything that Tando has to bring, which is very admirable because I don't Thank think a lot friend. of people get a chance to explore everything that they are. Where did you learn that? Yo. To kind of hug all tandos of every phase. I think my parents embraced whoever I was at whatever given point. Yeah. But I think they also expect... I never wanted to disappoint them. Mm. I always wanted to excel. I always wanted mm. to, do, to do good. Like, I don't know. I just enjoy, like... I, I enjoy... Excelling. I'm very competitive mm. in nature. Yeah. I think it, it, it comes from sport. <laughs> like, sport for me is such a, an important thing. Mm. Um, I think, I mean, I did cross country. I really owe it to cross country. Yeah. I did cross country from when I was around 10, 11. Yeah. What that teaches you is you keep going even when you can't Until keep you going. Can't, yeah. No, even when you can't, you keep going. Like, I remember my legs being numb and just continuing to run. That like, but it's it's almost like metaphoric, right? Because you learn to run when your legs can no longer carry you, and I've carried that all of my life. I think sport is very important. It's it's not just in the physical, but I think sport is more here than it is in in the body. I like that you touched on that because I think one of the things that I've always admired about you, and I think a lot of your friends would say this, is how there's no no in your life. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> when we say, oh yeah, so they're saying we can't do that. You're like, mm. <laughs> mm. debatable. How, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's saying no? Yeah. Um, that spirit of carrying on, mm. even when everything, one maybe one could say is against you, or even when things are not looking very favorable for you. Where do you get that? Where, where did you see someone pushing beyond? What was in front of them? I think I see it with like my mom, like right. She Shut she up. like she goes on like like life hasn't necessarily been easy, and she just finds ways to just keep going and mm. keep going and keep going. Then I U J N C C. Yes, a lot of us leave U J. Yeah, I, I went to Y F M. Mm -hmm. You were still. UJ. I was so sad. <laughs> I remember being so sad. I applied for the Y Academy like. So many times. You did. I you did. were the one person I remember at UJFM when we were there that was like, why academy applications? And they kept saying no to me. And, and they kept saying no, right? But also, I want to know from you the feeling, because you're young at the yes. time. Yes. You're like 19, 20, 21. You're watching people that you have as your friends, but also some of them are people that you watch do their shows and you're like, uh. I don't and think everyone leaves. I don't think at that point you, you're you're weighing whose show is better than okay. than whose show. I think at that point I, I I'm asking like any ordinary person, am I not good enough for this yeah, thing? Yeah, you know, like everyone is going. Maybe I must you see the, the 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 thought of calling it quits actually didn't cross my mind. Yeah, I was just like, they must be mistaken because I mean it's a mistake. This thing they need to correct. Come right. Do you think you you're almost like crazy in how much you believe in yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's I think it's warranted. <laughs> also because you can deliver. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things I can't do. I can't sing. I'm, you know, like I'm not... I mean, you've never gone for it. No, because I know I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. Like but that's what I'm saying. Do you think you're crazy in certain ways that 
maybe to you and not crazy in like the literal sense of the word, but you've gone for things that other people could have gone for as well. You've mentioned there was a friend of yours in high school that you oh, felt yes. like was Bongo, Bongo, Shout Bongo out, was Bongo. so talented. Yeah. But you feel you feel like you will go for things anyway. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't do what they're meant to be to do because they are fearful. Yeah. I think fear gets in the way of a lot of people's success. Uh, I think we are our own hindrances mm. a lot of of the time. It starts mm. here. How can you expect others to believe in what you do when you yourself don't believe in it? Mm. Okay. Let's let's go back to Sandra growing up now. You have your mom, your dad, you have Sabu, your brother, you have Sasa, your little sister. Paint a picture of home, a random Wednesday, in the South, mm. in each way. What did that look like for little Tando coming back from when you're primary? Um, I'd probably, I'd walk home from school uh, most of the time. And I'd go past Southgate because, and I didn't need to. We born and Because we're calling in Lela. But I wanted to like, all the, all the naughty kids are going past Southgate. I'd play Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're still very good at yeah, it. Yeah, I am. Oh, I yes. like Dance Dance Revolution. So I'd play Dance Dance Revolution. Then walk all the way back home mm. I'd have chores I'd have to wash the dishes make sure the house is like clean before mm. mom which is why I don't clean today I don't yeah. I'm like don't, you don't I'm not cleaning again yeah like, <laughs> I'm not yeah. <laughs> because I would clean and you'd have to make sure the house is spick and span mm. before my mom comes home and then sometimes I would like I would procrastinate and I remember I remember my my brother and I getting into a fight because it was his turn to wash mm. the dishes. And, and he was he like, mom's it. coming home. So I'm like, it's your turn to wash the dishes. <laughs> and then he goes, I'm, so shy. I'm, so shy. I'm like, what do you mean it's, so shy? it's your turn to wash the turn. dishes? Like, you can't. And we got into a very big fight. My mom found us literally fighting about dishes. Mid-fight about dishes, but the dishes were done, so we both got into trouble. But anyways, so whatever, dishes are done. My mom would cook dinner. We'd watch the news. It's like a typical family. Mm. Watch the news, we watch Generations. Um, I, I would study and then go to bed. Oh, yeah. It, so it's, it's one of those families where mom and dad are left together and everyone has to go to bed. Well, yeah. I mean, afterwards, yeah. like mom and dad should. <laughs> <laughs> should be left together. Yes. So, so and it's you, mom and Sasana. Yes. How's that now? I mean, it's different. Oof. It's, oof. It was, it was five people. It's three now. Doing it deliberately. No, I'm not. Oh, it makes me cry. I'm not. It's three now. Mm. And it's the three girls, right? And you had the two guys that were the cornerstone of the family. How is it now? There's three women. We are excelling. <laughs> ah. <laughs> You're doing good. No. Mm -hmm. Why are you crying? Because you're crying. I'm not crying. Your eyes. I'm not crying. <laughs> Your eyes I'm are literally crazy. not crying. <laughs> I don't know. We're doing good. Um, I think life comes as it should. I think everything happens as it should. I think nothing is a mistake. I think you're prepared mm. Mm. for everything that, that comes in your life. Do you wish things were different? Perhaps. Absolutely. But would, would you be the same person if they were? Maybe not. Mm. Yeah, but I think we're, we're kicking ass. My mom has Beast Kitchen. She's doing amazing. She lives in Foy's in, in a, a beautiful, beautiful house. Home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My sister has House of Sass and she's an incredible mm. creative. I think I'm not doing too badly myself. Um, we, awesome. We're kicking ass. <laughs> what are some of the things you wish you had? Um, um, my brother, my dad. Are those the things you wish you had now? Yeah. They, there's nothing else. I'm good. Everything else I can I can attain. Do you know what I mean? Like everything else, I can I can attain if I put my mind to it. Mm. That I can't. These are the two things you can. I can't. There's yourself. nothing I can I can do. Unfortunately, like, like there's nothing I can do. Tando at, mm, Tando at YFM. I remember when you got to <laughs> YFM, right? I was like, that's my friend. Um, you were coming in to do, what, the ignition? Ignition? Yes, the ignition with Tando. The ignition with Tando. Yes. Uh, at 3 a.m. 3 to 6 flipping a.m. Dude. So at YFM, when you got to IFM, you were now doing the ignition. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to Tap, I don't think even the people here that are doing other shows, including us, 
I really forgot what the school's gonna do. Mm. Because when we were at UJFM, we're news readers. Uh, <laughs> we were reading news, Tandra and I. Imagine. We were reading news, and I remember Stia van Potgieter was yes. like, these two girls, come on. Um, so, I mean, I read news. I, um, like I said, radio was never really part of the plan. I just don't like, like, not being in control. Yeah. And I was just like, could I, it looks, like, radio is very intimidating. Yeah. Like, you sit behind yeah. a giant desk yeah. and it's like you're a pilot. And I was like, could I do that? And I was like, hey, I don't know. Mm. And even at UJFM, I think I did it for a couple of months. Mm. And it's then when I was um, picked up at Y. Mm. Because you didn't even do a year of no. being a presenter no, no, at UJFM. No. Yeah, it was a couple of months. Yeah. Um, but before I did the ignition, I stood in for... for but now, three to, No, no, no. That was later. Oh. I stood in for like 3 to 6 a.m. So I'd get every second Sunday there was about four oh. of us that and I think one of them was Sabi if I'm not mistaken but there was a couple of us that would rotate a Sunday until people started falling so off crazy. and then like people I, I remember the one lady had a baby so she couldn't really do it anymore um, and then another one just was not interested and then there was I think just me left and that's how I got the ignition because <laughs> I was the last man standing and so then they gave me 3 to 6 a.m. Which... Tell me about getting YFM because you grew up in oh. Soweto. We know the brand YFM oh. in Soweto. You know that I remember growing up, I used to see the, the Nothing black like Y stickers oh. everywhere. Nothing like it. I remember my brother coming home from parties and it would be like, you know, back in the day when they'd have linens at like parties, you don't have to be VIP like, to I'm get I'm just going to wear a linen yeah. anyway. <laughs> so he had like YFM linens. Uh, I, I remember listening to YFM. I entered a competition in varsity to like... Shadow yeah. And YFM was the dream yeah. And I remember My very first show At Y I was shaking like a leaf And Akino Matoso Was the voice of Y yes. At the time And to have Akin say Your name Come on <laughs> I was like Am I dreaming Is this Is this happening this is Akin, I can't yeah. put it into words What that moment Was was for me But there's a There's a lot of things That lead to that moment Right I remember after Varsity and I think one of the moments I'll never forget with my experience with your mom was your mom taking us to Clearwater. Oh, yes. 9% at the time. Yes. Highfield Stereo. Yes. We auditioned. Highfield Stereo <laughs> was looking for new presenters. Mm -hmm. And you and I went fresh out of university. Mm -hmm. And your mom was like, Siaya. Yes. <laughs> we will stand in the queue. Yeah. A very long queue at yeah. Clearwater. And we went there. And that was before we, we even both got on YFM. Talk to me about the support of a parent, oh. right? Because for me, my mom was always supportive, but my mom couldn't be available. And as my friend, I always heard your mom as someone that was yeah. available. But I can't imagine on the other side where it's, it's part of your life to have your mom's support yeah. like that. Uh, from when you auditioned very early for your TV to auditioning for everything else. I'll speak about like my mom's support. It's, 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 I don't know if I would, as a parent, have the support thing. Yeah. It's wild. It's, it's, it's like crazy. Yeah. Um, she paid, like picture this in your mind, right? She, my mother took an early retirement to be able to pay for my university, mm. for me to study A, become mm. accounting degree. Mm. By the way, there goes Sando. She's missing mm. classes. She's going to a chances. Ning, ning, she's at clear water. But you're with me. You're right? So, oh, stones. We're like, but like, <laughs> <laughs> stones well, she doesn't know about that part. <laughs> but she's with me at your yes. clear water. So I'm, in my times at Y, when I did 3 to 6 a.m., you can't catch a taxi to YFM at 3 o'clock in the morning. mom used to sleep in her car to wait for you to There's do There's no show. Ubers. Right, you take like without giving away uh, ages, but it's maxi taxis yeah, yeah. at the time. We don't have the money for yeah. that. My mom drove an Audi that had zero air conditioning in yeah, the middle of winter out. with a blanket. She would sit and wait for me to do this radio mm. show, which is meanwhile I'm at university. I'm supposed to be studying. Mm. You know, like mm. I don't know if if mm. most parents, I don't know if mm. I as a parent would have, would, would have done do that. that. Yeah. But she did that and she supported me. And it's so important for parents to support their their kids' dreams. Uh, but I don't know. She she had she believed more in me, I think, than I believed in myself. Let's go back to why, because now we went to yes. clear water. Um, and why you get for me, I think an opportunity that now changes your life. Bonang can't make most of her shows. You have to stand in for Bonang. This is now Bonang. Yeah. On what is the show? The B. What? The Saturday show, twelve to three, 12 to 3. at YFM. Was huge, yeah. And you kind of do like 
half the time. Yeah. You do the show. Yeah, yeah. Which for me, I won't lie to you, I think is a show that changed your life. Because it was that show that brought about 808. Thank you. It was the show that brought about 808. It was the show that brought about everything else that came after that. But talk to me about, because at the time, you filling a show, you filling in or standing in on a show that people are like, this is this person. Yeah. I mean, Benang is still to this day. Shout out. Yeah. Is a, a, a big deal. She's yeah. a trendsetter. She's, she's the girl she thinks that she is. And more. And more. Yeah. Like, forget the haters. Yeah. Um, and at the time, again, she's, she's very much a big deal. Yeah. And to, to stand in for her, uh, I was very young. I was maybe uh, 19. 22, 23. No. 22. Yeah. 20, 21, 20, 22. Yeah. Um, it was scary. It was daunting. No one knew who I, I was at the time, right? They knew who she was. Yeah. Um, it was very daunting, but I think I was up for the task. I think after a while it became, like I was comfortable. I was, I forget. Like a lot of the times, like my, mm. I'm fortunate in that I forget I, I forgot to be shooting a podcast. Mm. And sometimes mm. it's like put in mm. mouth. I forget. Mm. Like I completely forget. And I forgot because what we do is so much fun. Like we we get to, to I don't know, come into people's lives. Mm. And, and I got to do that on that show, which became then, yes, you're right in saying it became almost a stepping stone to say, oh, this girl. Who's this girl? Who is she? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I know it's just myself. Also, you were already that girl because you were already on My Perfect Family. Oh, yes, I was. You were already Tandongosi, who my nieces would be like, Tandongosi is your friend. <laughs> you were already, when we were in varsity, after auditioning millions of times, mm. um, had been on My Perfect Family. Mm -hmm. So it's not like when you got to YFM. No, I was, I was working on television. That was the first, um, my first acting on television gig. Yes. Um, which happened to the day, by the way, that I did my very first show on Y, that I Big shot day. My Perfect Family. Um, yeah, so for those who say, oh, was she acting first? Was she on radio? No. Technically, I was acting first before radio, but professionally, to the day, same time. Which is amazing. Hectic. Yeah. I've never thought of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And I think for me, because I I saw the theater thing when we were in varsity and I saw the varsity radio. And when my perfect family happened, I felt like that was first. And then radio came after. No, um, no. It was to the day, exactly the same time. And that's been the story of my life. Do you always feel like you have to kind of explain pe to people? No. I, especially as an actress? No, we, because we, I have a, a SAFTA award. <laughs> That's, that says Please, best uh, can we just go and to then I have a, a radio award. Okay, let's go. That sure says then. best drive host and drive, best presenter. drive show. Come on. So no, I don't have to explain that. But but do you? Uh, you don't have to explain to anyone, right? But we know that acting and actors uh, will always kind of like question things, right? Do you ever find that when you get on a set or when you yeah. get on any set, you kind of have to be like, no, I think people are, are generally curious it's it's people see it as two different worlds yeah um and they are two different worlds because it, it's two, it's different people but for me in my mind it's the same world it's it's radio is a theater of the mind mm. and uh, acting is theater mm. or, or acting mm. but both ways you're telling a story you know what i mean you're, mm. I'm, I'm a storyteller mm. i'm using different mediums in which mm. to do it and and people have a hard time understanding mm. i guess maybe the the two worlds i'm so blessed mm. in that i have have the two worlds that have collided Famous. my entire life. Mm. Like it's an anomaly. I can't mm. think of anyone True. in the history of South Africa mm. who has ever done that. And is at the top at both. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Not correct. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Tando, Tando as a kid growing up was always interested in all these things, right? Mm. But Tando also as a kid growing up, not only was she a younger sister or older sister, um, she was also a friend. Yes. You have... I've made friends with people that were your friends, yes. you know, growing up. What what do you think they would say about you? Like how you speak about like Bongo, right? Yeah. Um, if your friends were to speak about you, what do you think they think? I think they think I'm crazy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they think I'm crazy. Like, yeah. I mean, I am a little bit. Yeah. Because I really like, I'm just like, I'm like, life is for the taking. Yeah, first. Like, I want yeah. you. You know, and Melu Falls day. Mm. Like I feel like you live once, and I'm I'm just like the day I die, I must have tried it 
all. And even if I failed at it, it's like, I would have just like, gone for it. I would have gone for it yeah. anyway, you know? And I've always been that person. And I, I mean, Dumelo tells the story of, of times We'd, we'd wake up in the morning and I'd knock on his raised door and I'd have a full face of makeup and yes. I mean I'm sometimes over the top um, and hair that's probably those gone. makeup days were so lit yeah I, I used to wear such terrible makeup yeah we, and the Kitty Hills and the, yeah it was like like a, a cowlick and then it's like blonde <laughs> but, but it's, then like it's like blonde black. underneath and and then you're wearing like a figure belt but it's <laughs> it's got like glitter on it and that knock so you imagine your friend like looking like that and then knocking it's all done you see, uh, to my love, please can I have, um, at the time, taxes are cheap. Five yeah. bucks, five rand for a taxi. Um, I need to go to an audition. And you'd be like, but you went yesterday and you didn't get the job. So where are you going now? Why do you keep forcing? So I'm mm. just like, no, no, no. We have to, I have to keep going. Um, I remember having just a five rand. I remember having a one way to where I'm going and no way back. I remember jumping into taxis and not having, I'd be, you know, it, it takes my jigger. When they say Malia Shota. No, Malia Shota. Malia Shota, how long are you? But so we'll say, Mara Manja, I'm 750. No, what you do is you sit in the front. What I did. So you I, can blame everyone. Yes, because I get to walk by So, <laughs> And then, but you have to hand it over. So you have to hand you it over to your, the taxi you driver. Your and then the taxi driver is now like counting. I'd say, Malia Shota. We said a move. So, and I don't condone this at all. <laughs> like, do not do it. Um, but I did that like maybe once or twice. Um, I remember walking from like wherever, from like a Nuert to um, UJ. I remember that, but I've walked with you as well, right? I remember, I don't remember what, mm. what, what series it was. We went to an audition. At Atlas. Yes. Atlas Studios. Mm. And Tando talked me into this audition. <laughs> you were like, friend, you know. It was for go. Rhythm City. It was for Rhythm City! <laughs> was coming in. Yeah. And we had spoken about how we loved backstage as yes. kids. And here's this new show on E called Rhythm City. Mm -hmm. And we went to audition at Atlas. And I remember I had a class. I studied psychology, okay? I took my classes very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and so I remember, did I. And I, yeah, she did. I mean, you know. But I remember Sandra saying, no, let's just go. Your class is at five until half past seven. Let's go to this audition. But I remember us walking back to UJ and thinking, I shouldn't listen to this girl. <laughs> uh, I think this was a big mistake. Yeah. Do you have moments where you look back, take out friends or people that were with you in those moments where you feel like, I shouldn't have done that? Like what? Like drag you to an audition? Not even just an audition, right? Even in your career right now. Moments that you look back at and you feel like, oh, I could have, I could have not been a part of that. No. Um, I've been very intentional with the work. Mm that I've done, like there's no single production or radio station mm. where I've, I've been very, I'm not going to say lucky, but I listen to my gut. Mm. There's been times where I'll give an example, the move from YFM to 5FM. I, I remember a lot of people I thinking that I'm crazy. Mess. Everyone thought, is she mad? Is she stupid? But for me, it made sense. I was like, this is progressive. But also that move came with losing 808s. Yes. It came with, oh my gosh, she was on the right track. Correct. And I remember. Everyone thought, I, I'm crazy. I remember we met up and you were like, I feel, I feel like there's too many voices mm. of people saying you're making a, a, a big mistake. mistake. But I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you always been able to sit in a position where you feel like family, friends, crits, fans, I know what I'm doing. I mean, not always, you know, I'm human. So you, you sometimes question yourself. But also I find like the older you get, the more you question yourself. Yeah. When you're younger, yeah. you're almost sort of, you're, you're so fearless. free and yeah. you're fearless. You've got less responsibilities. The world is your oyster. You're just like, I'm just going where this voice inside mm. of me is saying I must go. And at the time I was offered... Um, was Zamadoube. 10 to 12. Zamadoube had left to go yeah. to the UK, I yeah, think. she was going to the US. And she was going to study English. And they were like, here's 9 to 12. And I wanted that show so bad. Yes. And I told him, I'm like, I want that show so bad. And he said, I'm giving you your dream show. And then I said, they've offered me to be a traffic presenter at five. He said, Just what? Traffic. He said, I'm giving you your own show, Tyler. Do your own show. And I said, no, I feel like I'm going to go work with Roger Good. I feel like I'm going to learn something there. It's going to be different. What did you learn there? Oh my gosh, everything. 
Are you joking? <laughs> Everything. I learned what radio must sound like. Mm. I, re- I learned the, the art of radio. I learned how to run a desk, like fire. Mm. Not just pressing buttons, like fire. Mm. Like make it sound like there's just like electricity mm. happening. You know? Um, I learned how radio is a theater of the mind where it's not stop and start and how are you feeling today or who's, mm. who dumped you yesterday but it, it's so much it, it can be playful Motive. it can be fun it can be emotive it can mm. be can be true it can be a lie it can be an imaginary you can create whatever mm. world Roger Good would create worlds you know what I mean? Like, what people don't know is we'd be live on the radio, but Roger would, would take a, a, a caller and, and pre-record that moment and quickly cut it to what he wants it to sound like and then back announce a song and then play the pre-record as if it sounds like it's, it's live. Um, it's, it's small things like that where you just, you know, where you can create a world within a world. I remember you, you after the first couple of weeks you worked with Roger, you were like, you need to come to work with me and see. Yeah. So you were like, I was just like, you need to see. You were see like, you this. need to see. I'm not seeing radio the same way. <laughs> I'm like, it's different. We've been doing it wrong. And and he allowed, obviously, I was at YFM, but he allowed me to sit in and I was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Do you do you look back and feel like that move even changed how I did radio? 100%. Yeah. 100%. It changed my, uh, we'll go back to the race thing, right? Yeah. I barely listened to 5FM. Yeah. I remember when I first arrived at 5FM, I didn't understand the jokes that they made. Yeah. And I would just sit there and be like, yeah. you know? Um, and then I decided I'm going to go against the grain. I'm just going to be Lean myself. into it. Lean into it. I'm a, and then that sort of stuck and it, and it worked. But, but I was able to mm. intertwine these two worlds. And I think I still do that to this day. Mm. And, and some people misunderstand it, so don't get it. But I'm just like, I'm so proud to be black. And I can be black in a different world. Um, you know, and I can I can celebrate what it means for somebody else to be from a different culture. I can I can celebrate them not understanding me, and they can celebrate me not understanding them. And instead of being divided Pride. by it or, or, or pretending yeah. to understand, you know, that our worlds are different, we are able to ask questions. And I feel like people for a long time have been afraid to ask questions. And I feel like sure. I've created environments where we can say, what does that mean? You know, something as simple as like, mm. what does that mean? I don't know what that word means. And that joke went over my head. Yes, but I, I don't get it, you know? Mm. And I think that's the beauty of radio. Yeah. That, that organicness Correct. is the essence of what radio is. Yeah. What's your radio now? Oh, my radio is orgasmic. Oh! Um, <laughs> I have so much fun. Like, I, I forget. I think mm. the beauty in radio, for me, I, I enjoy when I listen to radio and it sounds like, people are just talking mm. and not speaking to me and not mm. speaking at, at me. Mm. Um, when you're, you're having conversations and someone says something stupid and you, you know, you're just like, what did you just say? Because mm. that's how people talk. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when sometimes you have difficult conversations where you're able to, I don't know, talk about, I mean, I'll give an example. We had a lady from the SAPS today. Apparently they get 20% of Virgin Active and Planet Fitness. The, the police, yeah, true story. Do they hear that? Um, well, I carry it's new. So uh, I said, but why don't they rather run in the streets? Because then at least they have street presence. You know what I mean? So you see them running in blue. Yeah, yeah. Wait, have you ever seen a cop running in the streets? No. Have you ever? No. Think it's no. like saying, have you seen a white horse? <laughs> like, I have. Every time I think of when I have hiccups, I think of a white horse. <laughs> but once upon a time, we say, have you seen a white horse? Right? So it's like, yeah. have you seen a, a police officer out in the streets? Um. But yeah, I, I, like having conversations like that, that matter. Learning, like I learned so much about the Springbok. Sorry, my phone. I learned so much about the Springbok over, you know, covering mm. um, the Rugby World Cup. Um, just, yeah, my, my radio for me is, is fun. It's, it's connecting with real life human beings on the daily. And what a blessing that is. Is it because you think of what your self, what young Tanda would have liked to hear? Someone that sounds like them? Someone that is not all knowledgeable at things. Someone that's able to say, I'm not fully no, I getting think, that. I think radio, Who do you think you, you're speaking to? I think radio is, great radio is time behind mic. I yeah. think like you become comfortable. I think a young Atando would not be so comfortable to say she doesn't know yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like the older you get and the more comfortable behind a mic you get, the more you forget that this thing is there. Yeah. The more you, you're yeah. organic and you're just having conversations. When you're younger and more immature in, or uh, immature is probably the wrong word, when you still have years to go, mm. you find yourself putting on mm. 
and yeah. and then after a while, like so, like so right, yeah. like you just you know, it's like this is what it is. Yeah. What do you think, Young Tanda would say if she looked at you now? Shoo, girl. Ah, uh, I'm I'm so proud of myself. Are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of myself. Ten year old Tando, straight from Alpha, going into Mondio Primary, having all these things that the challenges of trying to fit in, very different, very talented, very academically sharp. Mm. Um, but you're your Tando. You have a very different background from other kids. If she looked at you now, what do you think? Ten year old Tando? She probably wouldn't believe it. Um I mean, I, I don't know. I I I hardly I I'm I'm crying. Are you crying? Yeah, I do you want to see me as well? <laughs> uh I don't know. Like I, I need to do better at like stopping and, and yeah. looking and which is probably why I'm I get so emotional because I hardly do it. I I don't I don't look back, but um why, yeah. why don't you reflect? What do you think that is? That you you don't stop because uh, outside of the fact that I obviously know that you don't stop, but I think as a person, you are such a go 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 person. Mm. Why do you think you? Don't I think it's a defense mechanism that I've I've sort of um, learned over the years. I think I've I've experienced a lot of trauma, okay. And I, I think what you do is I've 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 taught myself how to overcome. So even when things are good, what I'm doing is. What overcoming mm. <laughs> you know when there's nothing to overcome mm. it's like stop um it's a good and a bad thing what do you think smoo would say oh i hate you can <laughs> can we stop this thing i think he'd be so uh excited um he'd love to drive my car he i always would. think about that he'd be like he oh my gosh in fact when your brother passed on he was like you were getting yeah. a new, you were getting a new I got car. that Nivea gig, remember? Yes. You were and getting your big check. Yes, I was getting my first big check. And I remember, it's still on his like Instagram. He yes. was the proudest. He was like, do you know who my sister is? Imagine now. He'd be like over the moon. He'd be over the moon. I think, I mean, uh, I, I believe that, you know, people are still with us in spirits. Mm. And, and they, they carry us and they, they become our strength, our angels, uh, our guardian angels. And I, I think he's, he's super proud. And I think, he'd, I think he'd be having a good time. Tando Tabete, a drive show on 947, which is a feat mm. for any radio presenter. The youngest uh, drive time host in all in of the history Sat of the South ah. Africa, right? Uh, but doing a drive time show on 947, which I think is brilliant, the show. Thank you. When you look at yourself in that position, when you are now in your beautiful home alone and you count your blessings, and you you count the things that you still want to achieve. What do you say to yourself? How can we be better? <laughs> like, I'm always looking forward, and like I said, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's it's a bad thing. Mm. Um, but I'm I'm always competing against myself mm. on on how I can I can do things better, like uh, and show up. I've got so many things that 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 uh, so many things happening mm. Mm. in my life, and sometimes I feel a little bit, mm. you know, overstretched and. It, 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 some things are compromised, mm. right? So my time with friends is compromised. Mm. My time with family is compromised. Mm. Um, for my work, um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't know. I, I, I'm grateful more than anything that I have the platforms that I have. And part of your stretching yourself, actually, before you finish, is a production company. Yes. Where you did your reality show. Yes. First of its kind in South Africa, for the talent to be their own EP. Yes. For the first time in South African reality television, your company shot your reality show. Mm. How's that been? Challenging. I'm an actress. I'm used mm. to a script. You didn't even want to do a reality no. show. <laughs> I said no for so we many years. We sat you down so many times. We're like, just do I it. I didn't want to do it. I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I, I like... 
I like my my life to mm. be my life. Um, but I, I wanted to treat this as a memoir more mm. than anything else. Something I can show my kids mm. one day. Something I can look back on one day. So it's mm. not going to be us standing on top of tables, mm. punching one another. Mm. Um, other than that, that's, that's just not who we mm. are. And that's unfortunately not what you're going to get. Mm. I have dogs that run around and live a soft life. Mm. They go to Cape Town. And and they are, then they... They run on the beach. So if you see a doggy party, we're not pretending. Mm. It's, it's the it's real life. The really, really. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you because I think I can comfortably say that I've seen you say things and do them. Oh, thank you. Very much. And I think to witness that as a friend, to see someone say, I'm going to do that and see them do it. Mm. To even witness that mm. as a friend is like wild. And I'll always say, you are crazy. You are, you go way beyond what you should. I think your dreams are so big, but you're so fearless in fetching them. And I hope that you know that that in itself, in and of itself, is such a big influence on the friends around you. And maybe we don't tell you enough. Uh, and maybe... <laughs> and some tissue Maybe I've got my tissue okay. yeah. <laughs> Maybe your family doesn't tell you enough I think Your Your Intention in fetching things that you think Not even maybe you deserve But you think Are meant for you Is so inspiring um, And I think to be able to I'm looking at this wall of all these covers to be able to see all of this and you did all of this yourself. Yeah, I think God doesn't put ideas in your mind or in your heart that are futile. If it's here or it's here, it must be here. How's love looking? Beautiful. I'm U trende this year. <laughs> U trende. U I've never seen you trend like this. Me too. In my 15 years of knowing you. <laughs> I'm so happy. When Utrend is this podcast ending? <laughs> Utrend, you know, this year, how's love? <laughs> love is beautiful. That's I'm good. surrounded by love. Like, my, for my little doggies, no, to my friends and my family. <laughs> uh, it's such a beautiful, it's, it's, it feels like a hug. How does it feel at night? At night? Like um, a it hug? depends. Depends. If it's a winter night, you have an electric blanket on and it feels a little bit warmer. <laughs> <laughs> you bore me. <laughs> you really bore me. Uh, but thank you so much. Thank you, friend. This I love you. Being beautiful. I love you too. And I'm I'm proud of you. And I'm yeah. proud of this that you that you're doing. And I'm proud of the consistency um of it. And yeah, I, I'm so proud to see you like also like set a goal and slash it uh, and have all these people around you that uh, are making it happen. Seven it really people, brings yeah. me joy. And I, I know it brings them joy. This is a bunch of people that believe in you and what you do. All of them, look at them. They're here for you. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> look at my people. He's like, yeah, we're in this. Well Thank done, you friend. so much. I love you. I love Thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I love love for you. It looks so good on you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about I know about love. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop it. I love looks good on you. I'm you happier. In... You lighter. Who said I'm in love? No, whatever love you're getting. Yes, I have so much love around. But I'm me. whatever that love yeah. is. Yeah, and God. God yeah. is and uh, God is love. God is love. Is God not love? God is God a is lot love. Of and love. God's love looks amazing on you. Thank you, friend. Um, and God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. God is with me. It's good on you. God is with you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hope God is with you. <laughs> Amen. Listen. Shout uh, out. Episode 13 <laughs> of Moments with Mansi. With Tanda. So, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> She's in love with God. <laughs> Check out part two. It's coming very yes, soon. Yes, me interviewing Mansi. Yes. Can you believe it? I can't wait. Bye-bye. <laughs>